today we are here uh, because this past week we have been receiving incredibly devastating news of the black community. We found out on Friday evening that the murderer of Andrew Loku, uh, the police officer that killed him, has not been charged. You know, this is an injustice and the death of Andrew Loku is essentially it's a, it's a symbol, it's a representation of how black life in this city is treated as disposable and disregarded, um, and that, that doesn't matter. The SIU, the Special Investigations Unit, decided not to charge the officers that, um, that killed Andrew Loku. So yesterday, we came together, you know, really to kind of put on our own Afrofest festival, um, to you know, highlight black singers and black performers in, in our community, but also, you know, to stand with the family of Andrew Loku and his friends and family. We're here to honor him and on take up space with his life and celebrate him, but then also fight for accountability and justice for his murder. We're also here because we also found out that Afrofest, which is a massive festival that brings over thousands of black people in the city, has been cut from a two-day festival to a one-day festival. It's just another case of anti-black racism in the city. There are countless, countless, countless festivals that happen in the very same location um, that are just, just as loud or twice as loud or three times as loud and nothing really happens to them. Um, this is one of the only, one of the few black festivals that happen in the city uh, and it's been shortened and so um, it's really disheartening to see and it continues um, to show the anti-black racism that exists in the city. This is the only space that we have um, to come together as a black community in the city to celebrate our culture, who we are as people, to be able to heal and congregate and to have a space where we're able to support and love one another. So this being taken away from us is a huge, huge, huge devastation and it's also represent representative of the ways in which this government views us and does not see us as human beings worth of dignity and respect. We started off our action at Nathan Phillips Square we decided to have a recreation of an Afro festival. So we had dance, we had music, artists come through. But then we also opened up the space to honor Andrew Loku's life and hosted a vigil as well. And just take up that space to be able to show that as black lives, we matter and we're not going anywhere. And then afterwards, you know what, we weren't ready to go. Um, so we set up our, our, our tents. But the police came to us around midnight and uh, was threatening us with arrestability, but then also escalating tactics by bringing horses into the space and uh, more like police officers in riot gear. And then after the police threatened to arrest us, we decided to relocate right to them. We came right to them. We were at police headquarters. The community decided that we were not ready to go and we were not ready. Uh, we don't feel like the mayor and the police chief and everyone hasn't, they haven't, they hadn't heard us enough. And so we decided to continue and we want to continue um, as long as we feel it's necessary. So we're trying to create space to heal, to be able to rage and to be able to support each other as a community and we're being met with violence. And this has been what black people have to experience all the time within this city. Every single time we come together, we're criminalized and we're targeted and this often leads to like our death. And we're gonna hold this space until our demands are met. So some of the demands that we're putting forward is that we want the information of the police officer who killed Andrew Loku to be made public and the footage from his apartment complex in which his murder was documented to be made public material. We have a right to know what police officers are doing with us when they interact with us in the street. And this is information that in the states is already available. There's modes to have uh, the police accountable when they uh, commit these infractions. But here in Canada, we don't have any accountability measures, and this is what we're fighting for. The SIU is a problematic body. It's essentially just a body of police officers policing the police, and that makes no fucking sense. That makes absolutely no sense. So we're here to call for an overhaul of the SIU and serious, serious, a serious look into the ways in which police are being protected and their impunity is being retained by this body. We're not gonna go until our demands are met. This is our 24 hour mark that since we've been here and we are hearing that police are gonna be into the, in the space and we have no intentions of leaving. We're gonna stick our ground and we're gonna stay here. This is our space. We're tax paying citizens in this community, in this city. We have every right to take up space and since Forever, black people are not allowed to take space. We've been raised in a multiplicity of ways. Our communities are being gentrified. We're being pushed out of um, so many systems, from the schooling system, to healthcare, to education, to access to like proper housing. All these things are being affect are affecting us, our quality of our lives. And we're not taking any shit anymore. We have to take up space because we're not gonna allow them to push us over and erase our, our presence. So this is why we're here. We're setting up the set because we want to make our blackness visible. We're here and we're not going anywhere. Black power is the solution.